Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Pincade. Um, hasn't really been doing too much lately. I've been kind of busy. It's it, the holiday weekend is coming up. Um, I've been trying to start another project, which is um, building multiple meme cabinets, but not necessarily all meme. Uh, some of them may be you know, replicas of real cabinets that have, you know, JAMA harnesses with PCB boards. I'm not going to get too much into that project. That is a really high-level arcade uh, type gaming project. And and it's really more of a proof of concept before I start to buy all kinds of power tools and wood and stuff and start constructing these things. And it's going to be a project that I'm going to be working on the planning for a long time because seeing a lot of guys build um, their meme cabinets you could tell that like they they anticipate uh having it and they rush through the job and it's like either they they buy like a a half ship box you know arcade machine that doesn't really fit the application the panel that they're using on a screen or whatever and then and then it just looks like a shit box or it doesn't function you know as as well as it could have um and i just want to build something really nice right and and like i said there's a lot of things i want to i want to work out because i'm probably going to build you know maybe like two meme systems one for vertical um games and then one for horizontal games and i'm looking at converting uh all the wiring and stuff to, to JAMA standard and converting JAMA from using a regular arcade monitor to using like a flat screen monitor or um, maybe an old CRT monitor or TV and decasing it and mounting it. So uh, there's a lot of things I'm trying to iron out in my head along with, you know, what buttons do I necessarily need? Because I don't want to build like a... Uh, like so many other machines where, you know, they have have 18 joysticks on the control panel, 65 buttons, and it's just like, you just look at it, and it's like, I don't even want to, I don't even want to play that. It's just overwhelming. The buttons are all over the place. And right now I have, you know, control panels that I have that um, are already built to, like, a Street Fighter uh, layout with like two extra buttons and a rolling ball in the middle. It's it's the tank sticks from arcade X arcade, um, and and they're okay. I mean it's not it's not terrible, but the action on the joysticks aren't where I really want them to be. Um, and certain games I feel that are older, like classic games, having six buttons there when you only really really need two is kind of overkill and it kind of doesn't give you the right feel for the game so like i said there's a lot of things i'm ironing out with that so i figured today i'd i'd, I'd throw something out there because it's been a while and uh this one's not gonna be for the faint of heart this one is gonna be um using vp10 vp10's been out in beta testing for like months now so i'm i'm pretty comfortable um doing a video on this although it might not necessarily work exactly and we'll get to that as we go through it but the reason why i'm, I'm comfortable for it is because I, I have this feeling like it's it's getting more and more closer to like an alpha state or production release you know and um I'm going to start using it more and more as I see tables coming out. Because originally, when I installed this and got it working, there was all kinds of kinks, right? There was, like, a lot of tables would come out. They were, like, very low-level done just to see if things were working right. And half the time, you got all kinds of errors with the scripts and stuff like that. So I didn't want to get too involved with, with using it at that time because it was just too uh, premature, in my opinion. Um but now I think it's at a state where it's becoming more and more usable. And I want to start getting uh, familiar with it so that when it does fully come out, I can make videos on, on how to tweak the physics on this stuff. Because the uh, if it needs physics tweaking, to be honest with you. But um, this is a whole other animal. It's kind of like FizzMod. And if you've been using FizzMod, uh, that's just a pre-release to VP10. 
right? So I don't know if your FizzMod table is going to work in this because FizzMod kind of rides off of VP9. Uh, VP10 is like the, the legit, like, real version of FizzMod. So um, the first thing is if you go to VP Forums um, and you search here, and you know, the, the Forums box is searched here. And if you do uh, VP10 or something like that, eventually in this listing, I don't know why it comes down at the bottom, but you'll see at the bottom there's, there's a VP10 is here beta topic, and there's a VP10 table testing topic. Um, this first one is the actual engine, right? And the second one is the actual tables that people are releasing. So I have both of these threads open, and this first one here is the is the table testing and the second one is the beta so i'm going to actually just move those so that they're in kind of like chronological order type thing so this uh installation is similar to you know watching the video that i talk about how to have multiple versions of of uh, visual pinball running on your system it's pretty much the same concept right you're going to make a vp10 table you're going to put everything in there um I have a shortcut here to my visual pinball 10 and this first thread in the in the beta thread for the actual engine the first entry is constantly updated with the newest revision that they've coded for um, in that revision it says 2177 that is the number of a revision that they're up to right and here, here's the change log if you really want to read that but that stuff gets very in depth that's more for like table authors to know you know what was fixed what was tweaked uh, what was added what was removed etc um, my version and I've only updated this about maybe a week or two ago is is like five five revisions are uh, behind already uh, so make sure that you're constantly updating this thing right but keep in mind that when you update it, your existing tables may no longer work or they may have a new bug that didn't exist originally, right? So don't fall in love with a table, right? Because they'll release an update and that table may not work anymore. This is more for tweaking, playing around with, getting an idea of what it work, how it works and everything. So I'm, I'm due for a revision update, which is what prompted me to do this video. So we're going to actually update this together right now. And I didn't even download this stuff. Like I said, I just plugged in my headset, started recording. So that one's downloaded. And this next table, next table, this next um, tab is the one that has all of the test tables. Now... Originally, these things were just thrown on here, and then they started putting dates on them, right? So as you can see, this guy is from April 4th, right? Most likely, if the if the Dropbox link even works for this file still, if it's even there, would be a, would be a mystery, right? But April 4th, that's probably like a thousand revisions behind, right? I would not suggest trying to tinker with these tables unless they've been updated if you scroll all the way down you'll see like you know at the end usually at the uh, middle of the month it, and you'll see it in the dates right here okay so here's the start of the month they they updated the list and then it looks like maybe in the middle of the month they did it again and then towards the end of the month they'll do like a bigger list update and if you follow this thread you'll be up to up to date as the tables get released from the authors as well. I mean, if I go up here and I go to the last, you know, entry and just start working, uh, working my way backwards, right? Uh, you'll see tables getting fixed in real time. So I'm um, trying to find like a like I said, all this stuff is brand new. I didn't, I didn't I don't really follow this thread, but I'm trying to find in in these posts, which to be honest, with you, it's it's 
it's kind of rough going through. I, that's why I don't really follow this. I just don't have the time to follow this. But if you if you flip through, <laughs> it's like 92 pages already. If you flip through this, um, you will find table authors posting their stuff up for people to test with and give feedback. Uh, see, for example, right here, this is Dozer, uh, 316. He's been working on a, what is it, um, Judge Dredd with the dead mod in it, which is pretty fucking cool because if, if you're not familiar with Judge Dredd, it, it has this, this like, uh, it kind of looks like Saturn. It's got this like planetary thing in the background and in the real table, it, it, they, they were doing this thing where they wanted the balls to, like, sit in the Saturn ring for multi-ball and then release, you know, when multi-ball was ready. Um, but at, like, the last minute or whatever, I think it was Williams or it might have been Williams or Bally. Um, at the last minute, they decided, you know what, we don't want to deal with that. Uh, take it out of the production game and just put, like, you know, holes that are cut so that the ball drops right through and goes back into play or whatever. So, uh, in the real world, you know, years after this, people started, you know, someone, I guess, caught wind of this or whatever and decided to build the Dead World mod and start a reproduction and, and people started upgrading their Judge Dreads. And um, I think pretty much most of the visual pinball ones that I've seen, I'm not a big Judge Dredd fan, right, but... Most of the pinball machines I've seen on on, uh, on virtualization, I, I think they use the same method. They don't use the Dead World mod. But this one is using the Dead World mod. And I would like to try and get this one to work right now because tonight I'd like to try it um, to see how it works and how it looks and everything else like that. So I'm actually going to download this one because this is like a mega download thing. And this thing tends to take forever. I should have downloaded it. Um, well before starting this video, but with the way I talk and explain things, it'll probably be done before we know it. So I'm just going to leave that running. Now I do have a version of Judge Dredd on this table, but it's a VP9. And, um, maybe, maybe we'll look at it really quick and see the, uh, if it's actually running the dead mod version or not. So as you can see, that planetary thing, I don't see any holes in the orbit saucer type thing that goes around it. So it just rolls off and goes back into play. Um, so this is not using the Dead World mod. And I, I don't know if I've even tuned that table or whatever. But anyway, uh, since that thread came out, where is it? When did he re-release this again? Today. I'm going to assume that he's using the latest version of this uh, beta release. Which they never really tell you which version it's written for. Which is kind of frustrating because sometimes you don't know which one uh, you should be trying to test it. If you're testing on uh, a table that they didn't write for. A uh, version that you, they didn't write for yet or whatever. Um... But anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the DLLs. Uh, what I did right now, you know what, let's do this. I'm going to extract this VPX uh, folder. All right, so there, there's, the, there's the new 2177 version, right, which is this left window here. And the right window is my current uh current version. We're going to take the DLLs out. I'm just holding left control as I click them and I'm just going to move them and I'm going to move them replace. Oh, too late, whatever. So that's in there. I'm going to move this EXE in there and I'm going to extract this. I don't really need the PV PDFs and I think these text files are just informational and yeah, command reference change log I really don't care for those either so this VBS is uh, those visual basic scripts sweet that table downloaded already 
is those Visual Basic scripts that you need to update. Uh, you know, recently someone was having a problem with this, and I kept trying to tell them that you got to make sure you have the right ones. So this is going to go in there, and this time I'm going to make sure that I put the conflicts on. So now all those just got rewritten, right? And I think we should be good with that. I don't think we need to update uh, pin name, but it never hurts to kind of keep your stuff up to date with these with these things because authors usually will keep up to date. Um, so what I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to check VP Universe because I like to get mine from VP Universe because it usually has the SAM stuff with it. I just got to remember where it is. I think it's in here. In okay, there it is right there. So they're using version 2.16. So I'm going into my pin meme. I got to remember how to even get the version. Huh. So this says 2.6. And this says 2.16. I cannot comprehend how that is uh or is this supposed to be 2.06 you know what I'm just gonna download it it can't really hurt anything if it, if it break if it breaks something uh, we could always fix it so the last time I did this in one of my videos I, I selected the wrong damn thing uh, and I got a pin DMD too all right so Learn my lesson from making that mistake in the last, in the, like one of my first videos ever. Now, like I said, this, this pin meme step might not be necessary for you or necessary in general. I'm just doing it because I like to keep my stuff up to date. So this only has, you know, three files. And these files go into... Hmm. I never thought about that. It's got this bass.dll, which is usually found in the uh, the VP folders. I never realized that I might not be updating this entirely correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two. I know these two go in there. Well, this one goes in here. This is the, the DLL for... Uh, VPN meme, right? So I just I just overwrote that. These could, uh, you know what? I'm gonna save those because those are my backups. I think, in the event that something really goes wrong. I'm not even gonna explain what that is. It really wasn't worth my time and effort for that. That was to get America's most haunted working. And the game was not really ready for me to be playing it. But anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. The Sam VBS. That goes into... Where the hell is it? I think it's in this table section. Yeah, there it is. So I'm just going to overwrite that one. That one is uh, used by everybody, so it's fine where it's at. And VB... Do I have one in here? I don't know if this uses it, but I'm just... It, it can't hurt to put it in there, right? If it doesn't call it, it doesn't call it. That's fine. And then I got this Bass DLL. I don't know if I want to overwrite this Bass DLL because this Bass DLL <clears throat> is the data link library that was written for VP10. So I don't want to mess with that. And the funny thing is I don't see this Bass DLL anywhere else. So anyway, let's try and uh, let's see number one if this 
shortcut is still working correctly. Yeah, so now it's running 2177. All right. So now the next thing I want to do, this VPX table is already uh, unzipped and everything. So I think I have one that I was trying last time, but it wasn't working, so I never made a video on it. And I'm just going to... Oh. So it looks like that was version 1 or something, and I'm now up to version 7. As you can see, I've been testing these things and playing around them. The funny thing is I have a Shrek VPX, which means... I didn't notice that my Shrek was a, a VPX table. Yeah, look at that. So I might have actually broken a table that I actually like playing. So this stuff is getting confusing for me with uh, how many versions I'm running. I think I'm running like four versions right now. So let's see if this uh, loads what it does. Let's see if it barfs. Well, so far, that might be a good sign. And there's the Dead World mod. Okay, so I was a little bit wrong. Um, the original does not have the holes cut into the saucer. The original is just a solid saucer. And I don't think it um, puts the ball up there. Like I said, I, I played this once in competition. And I've played it a couple of times in the virtual pen. But I, I wasn't like a huge fan of it. So I kind of haven't paid attention to it. But I'm going to start learning how to play this more. Because this, this tends to come up in Papa tournaments a lot. Um, they like this game. I think it's kind of because it's kind of rare. I don't really run into this too much. So I think I'm going to start tuning this machine and learning the rule set on it. But anyway, this one has the Dead World mod. And, and there's the holes that I was talking about. And the saucer moves... And it puts the balls in those three holes. And then once it starts the multi-ball, it kicks them out of something. So, let's see if this loads up. I haven't even configured the, the ROM or anything. So now, the other day when I tried playing the other version... Ah, oh, there it goes. I was going to say, the other day when I was trying to play the, the other version, every time I hit the flipper button, I got this error message. And I'm still getting that error message. And, uh... That is just driving me crazy. So now the next thing is, <laughs> let's see if my Shrek still works. Because I actually really like playing this game. Alright, so the version is working. I don't know why that table just keeps giving me a problem, but... Now, I don't know if you've seen my my uh, video on uh, ball control, but I was playing Family Guy. This is exactly the same table as Family Guy. Just that the graphics, um, the call-outs, the names of things are all related to Shrek now instead of Family Guy, but it's exactly the same table. However, I, I Hello, tend to like this, is this a one pinball machine. a little bit better. Not I don't know why. Machine. Try hitting the plunger. A, you, know, you know, the little spring loaded black thing talking. to your right. Drive me crazy. And remember, no tilt. So, um, the Family Guy one was kind of starting to get on my nerves after a while because uh, it makes some kind of obnoxious noises sometimes. And it's just, you know, you want to play and you don't want to hear that shit. Anyway, so that is how you get that version running. Um,. Like I said, I'm going to play around and see if I needed some of these extra files, which I don't think I, I do because I don't recall updating every one of those files every single time, but I may have overlooked something and maybe reason why that one table is giving me a problem. But um, that's pretty much how you would get it running. Now, granted, you didn't see me put a, a ROM in for Judge Dredd or Shrek. Uh, the ROMs were already there, right? They, like I said, I already had the table working. 
this wasn't how do you get ROMs to work type stuff videos. If that's what you're looking for, you got to go see one of the beginning installation videos. Uh, that'll go over all that stuff in, in detail. But this one was just, you know, how would I get VP10 working? How do I start getting into the beta testing stuff? Um, so hopefully that helps you guys out. Have a good holiday weekend if, you know, if you're in the States and you celebrate Labor Day. If not, I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys, like two minutes after I shut down the video, um, I realized I, I thought about it really quickly and I realized exactly what the problem was and I tested it really quick and um, sure enough that was the problem uh, basically what's happening is that even though I have these different directory structures um, which houses a different exe this VBS folder is not working the way I thought it was I thought it would be calling from this VBS folder but it's actually not. It's calling its VBSs from this tables folder, right? Which means that all my VP99 VBSs and VP910, uh, whatever, and FizzMod, all these VBSs that it's calling it is in this directory. So what I ended up doing was I copied out all my existing VBSs and I made like this little backup file here. And I dumped in all the VPSs, VBS files that was from uh, the VP10 upgrade. And sure as hell, all the flipper stuff went away. The physics felt completely different. Um, and everything started working. So I now have to figure out how exactly do I fix my directory structure to support you know, VP10 being in there. Because like I said, FizzMod, VP9, and VP, VP991 and VP9, they all wrote off of VP9. So it wasn't really that big of a deal. Uh, but since this is VP10, and I'm changing all the Visual Basic script files, those script files are the ones that are emulating the hardware of the machine, right? Um, so like if there's something with Bally, if there was some like electronics with Bally, whatever, you know, in order for the ROM to work right, I, it, it uses these VBSs, which is, and, and it also uses that for the scripting. Because as you could see before, as soon as I hit a flipper button, I got a problem with the script because the guy was calling an object that was not present in the VBS file. Therefore, it couldn't interact with the table and would crash the table on me. So... That being said, um, this weekend I'll probably be figuring out how to completely isolate VP10 out of my directory structure uh, so it is a, a completely separate installation and not riding off um, my tables directory there. I don't know if that's going to be as simple as just uh, putting a tables folder in there and calling the table from there or what it is, but I'm going to play around. I'll find a solution. I always figure it out sooner or later. But just for the time being um i'm going to load up the vp the the judge dread vp 10 table again so you could see it working um so when you do your installation just keep that in mind that you're going to have to rewrite over your vbs's now it's not a big deal because you could always go to the website and re-download the vp9 vbs's and just dump them in there and overwrite the vp10 ones if you run into an issue I quickly played a game on VP9 with those VBS files, and it didn't cause an issue at that moment in time, but it's emulating a lot of different systems over a lot of different years, so I don't know if you're going to run into something in the future. But if you do, like I said, it's not a big it's not a big deal. You download the one file, you dump the VBSs, rewrite over them, and you're good to go. You don't have to do a bunch of configurations and stuff like that. It's not, it's not a major thing. It was just a technical oversight on my part just out of doing things out of habit so you let's start play? you gotta pay let's start up uh this game and i, I played it really quick and it was pretty cool the, the seated dead world mod working um however i will under i totally understand why um uh, this is a bally machine I totally understand why Bally's pulled it. Uh, it, it slowed down the multi-ball dramatically. 
Um, and, it, and it does some weird stuff. So as you see those three holes there, when you get the, the, the locks lit and you shoot that pursuit ramp on the left there, it'll hold the ball on that ramp until that hole comes around and then it'll release the ball into the hole. And then it, it kind of sits there and I don't know if this is an emulation thing or not, but it, it kind of sits there. It doesn't move the next hole to there, you know, to that to that loading spot. So what ends up happening, it spins it a little bit, but it doesn't, it never puts the hole exactly where that is, right? I guess maybe that's to prevent the ball from accidentally going in there. Who, who the hell knows, right? But when you actually get all of the ball locks and trigger multi-ball, that crane that's on the left actually picks the ball up out of the hole and then dumps it onto the play field. And then you got to wait for it to spin for the next ball. And then it's got to do that again. And then you got to spin for the next ball. So by the time you get all your balls in multi-ball, I mean, if you've played pinball, you know that sometimes you could get a really bad multi-ball and it's gone in 30 seconds. And here you are waiting for balls and balls and balls. And plus, sometimes when you play multi-ball, you know, you want to hit as many of those jackpots as you can quickly, and here you are waiting for the balls to come, and waiting for the balls to come. But, anyway, let's let's see if I can figure out how to get the balls locked again. I think I just have to hit that ju those judge uh, uh, targets. So if you bear with me, and, and you can actually see the physics working correctly now, because I think when I demoed this the other day, and I've been playing... Um, some VP10 tables, but I, I've been lucky because they hadn't really adjusted the VPS files that much, I don't think, and I've been getting away with it. But now I think they've, they're have uh, they doing enough adjustments that I'm not getting away with it anymore, so now the problem, you know, demonstrated itself. I, I will tell you, though, that the physics is, is feeling better. Okay, so I hit that ramp, this ball... This light is lighting. I don't know what exactly is going on here. Like I said, I don't know this machine. I'm just trying to figure out how exactly to get this lock to work. And the funny thing is, I, I played this in Pinburg this year, and I, and I beat the shit out of the people that I was playing on it, but I was just shooting, like, whatever was lit. I, <laughs> uh, I just saw some shots, and I just kept hitting them, and I was getting crazy high scores. And it was that shot right there. I, oh, that's, I guess that's why, because it was 2x everything. Now, I'm getting some stutter on this table. With mul when there's more than one ball playing, my frame rate is going to shit. Um, it's a known thing that they're working out. And it might also be a combination of the backlash, which you cannot see, which is flashing like crazy. Um, Back glasses, for some reason, tend to give me stutter um, when they have too many lights going on, and I think it's I think it's probably because I'm running a 32-bit system, uh, so I don't have that much RAM. Okay. Anyway, forget about that stuff. Wow, that's interesting. I really don't know if I should be able to stop the ball on the side. Oh, great. <laughs> Then Aaron tell me, oh, okay, here's what I'm going to do really quick. I'm going to shut off that back glass because I'm, I'm hoping that that'll slow down the stutter. But like I said, this stutter is also a known issue. They've been uh, trying to get people's frame rate samples. Uh, so let's just change this really quick so that. And I want to change this so I don't get that fake DMD. Okay. So I'm going to try it again, hopefully this time I actually get the, uh... You want to play? Gotta pay. So I don't know what triggered that two ball multi ball, but I'm going to try and use it to my advantage of of getting the targets down as quick because I think it's the targets. I, I'm wondering if you gotta get it twice or maybe in the hole or something. It seems like every time I, I trigger the uh, the multi. Okay, so it's not. Uh, 
Alright, whatever I did just now, I think you triggered it. No. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. So now we got a ramp. Damn it. Anyway, at least it's triggered. I just gotta get ball control and, and hit that ramp a couple of times. Uh, or just watch the ball drain like an idiot. That seemed like a really overpowered shot there. Okay, so let's see if we can get this damn thing locked. Okay, there's one lock. So I was lucky enough that the the thing was going around at the moment in time that uh, it was spinning. I don't know. I don't think I could backhand this. And I break the shot. I break the shot again. And I break the shot again. Ah, oh. there we go. So now, see, see how it's holding the ball there? That's gonna hold it there and wait for this thing to come all the way around. There it goes. Now it releases. Kind of reminds me of like those those uh, redemption type games. Okay, cool. We got the multi ball. So now here's my multi ball already starting. And now, okay, we're gonna pull one off at a time. We've got to wait for it to spin around as I'm shooting stuff. And then now uh, it's launching another ball. And, and now I'm waiting for another one to launch. There it goes. Now I also drained one, so it should have been a four ball multi ball, but now I'm up to three. Now I'm down to two. So, at least you got to see the dead mod working. Um, I'm not really, a, I don't think I'm a fan of it. I, I don't know if I can either get used to it or, or what, but. I mean, it's definitely cool to see it emulated. Don't get me wrong, but I'm wondering if he's going to put an option in, um, in the script to, to, to do like, you know, regular or dead mod. But uh, I'll tell you one thing, man. These physics for BP-10 is definitely cool. Now that I, <laughs> you know, for the longest time I've been playing it, it's been kind of weird. And I've been thinking, ah, you know, it's probably just the way they did it or whatever. And it was probably all my problem. So, I'm probably going to be playing quite a bit tonight. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like rambling as I'm playing right now because I'm actually having a good time, but... Look at that. Before I couldn't get multi ball, now I'm getting it like. Couldn't get the locks of the light before. Oh, yeah, this definitely feels nice, man. I'm, I'm just. It, it's nice, guys. You, you can't understand. I, I've been wrenching, uh, you know, uh, virtual tables now for like a year. And uh, there's nothing more enjoyable than, than to be able to like just turn on a game and just play it and not have to be like, oh, this this physics doesn't feel right, this flipper doesn't feel right, and, and sit there and and have to tune and tweak stuff constantly. I mean, it's even got some some ball spin on it on it. I mean, I don't know if the ball spins maybe a little bit too much at certain times, but it's definitely looking like a super wax playfield the way. It, you know, the ball is actually changing direction sometimes. The flippers, let's see a, let's see a flip, oh, that was a rolling pass. Oh, that's gonna drain, I knew that was gonna, but anyway, you get the idea. I'm gonna be playing some pinball tonight and, and testing out all these other tables now. Um, now I know this stuff is actually working correctly. So, apologies for the incorrect information from the beginning. Oh, and also I don't know if you noticed that uh, I didn't have ball stutter when the uh, when the multi ball was going on, which tells me that it's definitely related to the back glass. There's some things that you can adjust sometimes with those back glasses. I'm still trying to get 
um, a full working knowledge set on that. That's why I haven't really done a video on back glasses, and I don't really know how many people watching my videos actually have a dedicated cabinet um, that they actually need the back glasses. So, um, you know, if you guys want to see certain stuff, you know, leave some comments, and and I'll, you know, if I don't know it, I'll research it, I'll figure it out. Um, as long as it's it's not something crazy, you know. What I mean, if if guys start asking for uh, <laughs> ridiculous shit that doesn't exist, like um, you know, how do I make it work on on coins, like real legit coins, uh, so I can make money off it? I'm not gonna research that, right? That's uh, that's just not worth the time or anybody else's time. But if it's if it's definitely a cool feature, um. Or a cool concept that you have that you're like, hey, you know, how does this work? How do I do that? You know, give me some ideas of some things to, to make videos on. Because right now, there's not much going on in Visual Pinball because all the developers and all the table authors are, are really, you know, biting down on this, on this Visual Pinball 10 project and trying to, uh, you know, get the whole thing working correctly. And, you know, it's really appreciative to what they're doing. But... At the same time, there's not much going on until these guys are done. So that's why I started uh, just tuning tables here and there. And then at the same time, I started up a main project for something else. So let me know what you guys are looking to learn or what you need more information on. And I'll try and point you in that direction. But uh, like I said, try and keep the topics to something that's general and not necessarily specific to you in entirely. Um, like, I don't want to, I'm not going to make a video on how to, how to figure out why your monitor, you know, flips the wrong way when you start a game or something, right? That's something specific to you. But if you're like, Hey, you know, how do I make my pop bumpers, you know, more poppy or less poppy or stuff like that? You know, I'll definitely look into it and I'll definitely figure it out and let you know. So anyway. Like I said, apologies for the wrong information in the beginning. If you follow the second half of this video, then you'll get the right information. It's just a minor, minor tweak, and then you're good to go. All right. See you later.